I hope everyone's um, uh, QGIS project open up. I have it right here. I'm just gonna put it aside. I know that my open quick is running in the background. I know um, that I have my engine right here and I have my input preparation procedure right here. So this is the one that we were using for uh, everything. So what are we going to do? We're going to prepare a configuration file, okay? So we're going to prepare a, con a configuration file. Um, we're going to go, again, I am the IPT. We are in the exposure tab. We're going to move all the way to configuration file. Okay, so let's click right there. Um, in configuration file, we have uh, several options. Today, we're still on a scenario. Okay, so today we're still on a single rupture. Okay, we're, we're concerned about the deterministic hazard, just a single rupture of given characteristics. Okay, so we will be using this stuff. Let's choose the components of our configuration file. We are estimating hazard, those ground motion fields, right? But today we will also be estimating risk. So let's click on the risk, okay? Let's click on that risk um, checkbox. And we're going to put this little ball on damage, okay? So because today we have fragility and consequences, it means that we will be using the damage calculator. Let's click on damage, the little ball right there on damage. And we're ready to start inputting our, uh, our parameters. So first parameter, the description of this uh, particular scenario. So we're going to say this is, I'm going to be um, quite descriptive here. This is the scenario, San Jeronimo, magnitude seven, okay? And I'm going to say also Antioquia. Antioquia, okay? So very good, very descriptive. This is a, a magnitude seven event in, in Colombia. So very good in this particular rupture, in this particular fault. Um, do we have rupture information? Yes, we do. We generated this rupture information last week. Uh, if you don't remember where you put it, don't worry. We, we provided one, the same rupture, we provided it in the material for today. So we can just click on upload and we're going to today's material. And again, my missing desktop is the M2 part two exercise. And in the material, we're going to click on uh, rupture San Jeronimo. We're going to uh, uh, upload this one. So you can see that it's right there. I always like to make sure that it's in blue. It is selected because if I have several uh, uh, rupture files, um, they will appear in a list and the blue one is the one that is selected. So let's just make sure for those of you who are, um, if you have more than one rupture file, make sure that this one is selected in blue. So we're good. Rupture mesh spacing, the discretization of the rupture, we already said, um, talked a little bit uh, about this last week. Let's leave it in five kilometers. That's fine for now. Hazard sites will be, today, are we estimating ground motion fields in a grid? No. Today, we have buildings, which means we need to estimate the ground motion exactly below those buildings, exactly where those buildings are located which means OpenQuake can read the exposure model to understand in which locations it need to estimate the ground motion fields. So let's click on exposure model, okay? And we're going to provide an exposure model right now. Which one is it? It's the one we just prepared, the one that did that exposure model zip that we downloaded. And for those Mac users, the one that Tata provided. So we're going to click on upload. I am going to go to my downloads. I can see, the things from last week and I can see my exposure model right here. So I'm going to click here. This is my exposure model. It has been successfully uploaded, but it's not, not selected. You can see it here. It's not selected. So I'm going to make sure it's selected. It appears in blue, okay? Very good. Do we have a taxonomy mapping? Not, to, not today. In two weeks, I will explain what this feature is all about. It's a very nice feature. We won't be using it today. Fragility model. Do we have fragility model? Yes. Do we have fragility model for a structural uh, um, uh, for the for the structural uh, uh, components of the building? Yes. So we're going to click on upload, okay? And we're going to go to today's um, folder, which is that fragility uh, model that we explored together. M two part two exercise in material is this one right here. Fragility model XML. I double click on it. It's not selected. I make sure that it's selected. It's in blue, perfect. Do you have consequence models? Yes, which means not only damage, but also losses. I will be able to estimate. 
we will go to the same folder, which is right here, consequence model. I double click on it and uh, right there. So we just have fragility models, we have consequence models, uh, side conditions. Do we have side conditions? Today, we're estimating risk. So it will be um, quite ideal to think that all my buildings are in rock, right? To be like last time we calculated our ground modes with this in rock. If I estimate risk, if I try to do estimates of risk and all my buildings are in rock, um, I wouldn't be accounting for the soil quality, right? Which means most likely my, I will be uh, underestimating my real risk. Real structures are in, on top of soils and soils tend to amplify seismic waves. So we need a, a way to model that. We need a way uh, to, to operate on that, to, to be able to tell open quake, I have the conditions or, or there has to be a way. So instead of using uniform site parameters, we can use a site conditions file. A site condition file, it's a file that for every site in my exposure model contains the quality of the soil uh, via a VS30 parameter, okay? So I won't stop too much in here. If you guys have questions about this, we can explore them later. Today, we provided you with an exposure, uh, with a site model, and we, you can see it if you click on the on upload. There is, um, there is a CSV file in the, in the folder that we provided called Site Conditions Antioquia. Okay, so you can double click on it, and let's make sure that it is selected. If we have time at the end of the exercise, we will later on, open that, that file and we were going to see the format of that file. And we can talk a little bit about that about, and about site amplification. The important thing to right now is to understand that we're no longer asking OpenQuake to estimate the intensities in rock. That would be underestimating my risk. That would be ir not realistic, okay? So we are going to provide OpenQuake with, for every site in my model, there's going to be a BS30 value and so the GMP is going to estimate the intensity taking into account that the uh, uh, parameter at that particular site. And then it's going to amplify the intensity as required, okay? Uh, we're almost done. We're just going to ask OpenQuake to execute and we will, we will see that all the risk calculation will be done uh, quite fast. Uh, but uh, the nice thing would also to plot those results, right? To, to use the QGIS plugin and plot those results. So let's, let's try to do that. GMP is three, Akar Kanyan. Okay, so Akar Kanyan 2010, Akar with a hypocentral distance 2014, and Iris 2014. Okay, so um, I hope you have in your mind that, um, that um, Iris, let me see. Iris 2014, I found it right there. So I uh, remember that they are uh, right here. They get added right here. And I hope you have in your mind uh, that shape of that ground motion field. We remember Akarkanyan um, was that elongated one, the, the hypocentral depth. Uh, the, the, there was more circular one. This one also has like following the fault trace, et cetera. So keep that in mind. Why? Because that has influence on the risk. And the, the, the idea is to see that influence in the risk as well. So we have those three. These are the three that we're using today. Ground motion correlation model, no. I think uh, last week, someone of you put ground motion correlation model, but one of the GMPs is not uh, uh, compatible with ground motion correlation models. So if do not put it uh, as, as an option because it will give you an error. So right now, no ground motion correlation. Uh, do we have, um, for our risk calculation, do we want to take into account the uncertainty associated to the GMP is always yes. When you're estimating risk, you always want to take into account the uncertainty of the GMP, which means you will truncate it at a certain point. Let's choose three. So we are truncating it uh, almost at the tails and we will be able to take into account 99.9% .9 of all the variability in the GMP. Maximum source to size distance, let's use 250 just like last time. Again, this is a uh, the point at which OpenQuake will not will stop calculating intensities uh, because beyond that point the intensity might be too low and and we are not interested in that. So let's put 250. And for number of ground motion fields, it cannot be one because if it's only one, I would be sampling the variability only once. We want 
a lot of variability in our uh, realizations, okay? So what we are going to do is we're going to increase the number of ground motion fields, okay? Because this is a workshop, we're still going to use 10 like last time, or I don't remember if we use 100, but let's use 10. Um, it should be thousands, remember? It should be thousands because it's the number of times of ground motion fields that I'll be generating, and each ground motion field will be something for each site, one sigma, okay? So the more ground motion fields I do, the more sigmas I am sampling, and the more my uh, uncertainty in the GMP will be considered, okay? I will not put too many here because it, it, it creates a lot of ground motion fields, and then the IPT needs to bring these thousands of ground motion fields. It's still fast, but let's, let's, let's do 10 just for today. For academic purposes, it should be more. Again, it should be more. So it means that we are doing 10 realizations, okay, for Akar Kanyan, 10 for Akar et al, and 10 for Iris, which means we are doing, in total, 30 ground motion fields. Very good. I am going to click on download C file to see if everything is done correctly. Yes, I can see that uh, my, my C file for the calculation is right there. Um, and I am just going to briefly check that everything is correct and you can do the same. Description, I have it. Rupture, I am sure it's selected is right there. The exposure model is this one. It is selected, okay? Uh, fragility model is checked on structural and I have the fragility model in blue. Consequence model is included and I have it in blue. Side conditions, the ball is in side conditions. I uploaded it and it's in blue. I have the three ground motion models selected. No correlation model, level of truncation three and 10 realizations per uh, GMP, uh, ground motion model, okay? So I was able to download the file. Has anyone been unable to download the file? Does anyone have an error at this stage? Anyone who were not able to download the zip file? Uh, please raise your hands if, if, if you were unable to. Because we're basically done. Now we're, we're going to run risk, okay? We're going to estimate damage, losses, etc. So I don't see hands raised. Uh, you can interrupt me, Kata, if there is something in the chat or, or someone who didn't manage. What are we going to do? We go back to the engine. We are in the input preparation toolkit. Do not close it. Remember that it's use, always useful to have this open. We're going back to the engine and we're going to run the calculation. Click on run a calculation and you go to your downloads folder, whatever it is. And I am going to click on this scenario hazard damage calculation. And so I don't click on it. It's in uh, executing for me, so it's in yellow. Red means it failed the calculation. Green, it means the calculation was uh, successful. So let's see. Mine finished very fast, only 10 gram motion fields. I know that's too few, but just for today, um, and make everything more manageable, um, it was able to run. Does anyone have this in red? Does anyone was unable to run their calculation? I'll just give one second. Okay, so congratulations. You were able to estimate damage, losses, everything is in your computer. Everything is done. You can, in outputs, I, I said, I said today the outputs that we're going to have are loss statistics, damage statistics, damage maps, loss maps, and if you click on here, you will see that you have all of that and even more, okay? So you have your loss statistics, you have your damage statistics, you have um, damage distribution, um, you have the events that were done, you have a full report of the ground calculation. You even have the ground motion fields. It turns out that OpenQuick recalculates the ground motion fields and can give you that as a layer as well. So everything is in here. We're moving now to use the plugin. Again, the plugin is a tool to see the, the, the results, but you can, and you are more than invited to download the CSVs, explore the structure of the CSV, see what OpenQuick is putting the data in which kind of format, etc. Because remember that the plugin is just a tool to visualize the results, but you can use any tool that you want. You can use Python to, to parse the losses, to see the losses, to find the asset that has the highest loss. You can use a, a RGIS to create the maps that you want, et cetera, et cetera. So remember the plugin is just a tool to visualize the results, and this is what we're going to do right now. Let's move to the plugin to see at least these four things that I was telling you. We saw that OpenQuick generated many things. Let's focus on these four. 
let's go to the Ale, while you go there, yeah. just to to mention because some of you left some comments in the feedback form that once you download the results, you can also plot it in other tools like RGIS if you are more familiar with other uh, geographical uh, information systems. So the outputs, you can plot them in any tool you prefer. Here, as Ali just mentioned, the QGIS plugin is tailored for the open click outputs through uh, the plugin. Yeah. And this is what we will be using today. So um, remember, the plugin rightfully installed has the same version as the engine. Uh, hopefully, we were able to troubleshoot those issues uh, during the week. So you, all of you guys will be able to uh, plug the, the results today. To open or to use the, the web UEA, the plugin interface, um, is this one right here. It's the first button. It's the blue play icon. I'm going to click on it. And I will see that it's going to bring uh, the, the same interface. And I can see my new calculation right here, San Jeronimo, uh, magnitude 7 Antioquia. I will click only once on the calculation. And when it's blue, it will display all the results. OK? There are many results. OK? So we will, we will see four. We will see the most important ones. So um, let's, let's, let's try to follow me here. So there are many, many results. OK? Let's focus first. As, as we saw fragility first, let's see damage first. OK? So what about um, if we see the damage distribution? Okay, so damage distributions is this result called asset damage distribution. Damage we can observe in the space, in space we can make a map, or we can see it in graphs, in, in, in a numerical way. To see it in the numerical way, this is the first thing that we're going to do. We click on aggregate, okay? So we're going to click one click on aggregate, and this is going to bring us the aggregated damage distributions, okay? So what are the aggregated damage distributions? Aggregated damage distributions is no other than those half a million buildings that we gave you. We did the risk assessment. We gave everything to OpenQuake, model the rupture, GMPs, intensities, damage. So now we have what from those half a million buildings, how many are in slight damage, how many are in moderate, how many in extensive, and how many in collapsed, OK? Question, if we did 10 ground motion fields for a Carcanyan 2010, what is this result? Why am I seeing only one result? I should be seeing 10 results, each one for each calculation, right? These are called damage statistics because what you're seeing is the average of the 10 realization of the 10 ground motion fields that you did. And for each one of those ground motion fields, you have a damage state. And then what you're seeing here is the average of the damage. So Akarkanyan, only one result. This is the statistical result, the, the, the average damage. Uh, and the average number of buildings that collapsed for Akarkanyan, it's around 20,000 buildings collapsed. Okay? From that particular rupture, we have half a million buildings, but 20,000 collapsed. Okay? So you can see that um, it's, it's a heavy damaging event uh, in the city. and um, we can also choose from here. Uh, so that's Akarkanyan, which, which GMP um, causes more damage. Maybe one is more damaged than the other. Maybe they are the same. Let's see. Akar with high central distance, 30,000 buildings in collapse. OK, so you can right away see that the GMP has a direct influence in the statistical result, OK, in, in the overall result that we're obtaining. So Akar et al with high central R definitely um, more conservative results, definitely more losses. Let's see what happens with Iris. It is also conservative. So around 30,000 buildings for Iris and hypocentral distance. Uh, using hypocentral distances, Akar Kanyan, a little bit more um, uh, uh, modest results. So we can see already the range of variation between them. Okay. Um, very good. So we already saw, we're seeing the statistics of everything. We're seeing all the results aggregated. And I said that the tags were very useful, right? Because with tags, we could disaggregate these results and see, for example, out of these 10, 20,000 buildings, which ones correspond to low income families, OK? So I want to, I know that 20,000 buildings are, are, are collapsing. But maybe I'm the city manager. 
and I am interested in the resilience of the city. I want to know who is more affected by the event uh, in this simulation. And I want to know if, uh, if this event is disproportionately affecting more lower income families. So with the tag names here, uh, in tag names, it's a drop down menu. You can use this button to drop it. We're going to click on economic income, okay? And once you click on economic income, a new arrow will develop and you can click on the arrow and then go to the low income families, okay? So you choose the low income families and it turns out that um, low income families of those 30,000 collapses, um, more or less um, 6,000 are in low income families. Let's see middle income, almost uh, 12,000. So it means that that rupture is affecting or, or all of the collapses that I'm having almost, um, it's affecting mostly middle income and low income families, okay? Whereas high income might be much less, should be around 8,000, right? Let's see, sorry, should be less than 1,000, sorry. Um, should be around 800. So um, it means because we added a tag, because the exposure modeler went through the trouble of adding, asking the families or trying to find out the families, these people is high income, low income, mid income. We are able to understand how the risk is being distributed just by income class, okay? You can do it by taxonomy, you can do it by municipality, you can do it by tag, you can do it by any tag that you have used. So this is the usefulness of the tag. So, Quite nice, a tool to have, quite uh, useful, so uh, very good. And, and I hope this explains very well why you go through the pain of including tags or additional information in exposure and why it can be so useful. So very good, that is damage as a statistic, okay? What about losses as a statistic? Let, let's see losses because we provided damage and we provided a, a consequence model. It means that all this damage should become a particular loss, okay? So um, I'm, going to, I'm going back to the, to the plugin. I'm going back to the play icon. And then we're going to see average, um, average asset loss statistics. And again, we can see it disaggregated in space. In other words, a map, or we can see it aggregated. Let's see it aggregated first to see what happens. And um, Quite interesting. You can see here that um, losses are given. If if I'm seeing uh, the statistics of a loss, it's just dollars, right? So in the end, I'm not going to have this graph. Uh, I I am just going to have a single number for the total losses that we got uh, from from our analysis. And here we can see that this particular rupture is ca is causing a loss in Medellin. Uh, oh, sorry, for the whole department of Antioquia, because the exposure model covers the whole department, we're seeing that is $2.6 billion, um, dollars, this particular rupture. If I'm not mistaken, we said that we had $18 billion exposed. It means that for this rupture, we're losing almost 10% of the, it's such a violent rupture, there are so many collapses, so, many, so much damage, that for all the import structures, we are losing almost, um, 10% of their value. So we're, we're saying that this, this is a quite, quite heavy event, uh, given its characteristics, given its location, given its proximity to Medellin, to my building portfolio, this is definitely a, a scenario that I should uh, prepare for. Um, and, and this is the reason why we're doing the, the risk assessment in the first place. So um, I have a question for you guys here, um, and I will answer this, and it's just in the, in the interest of time. Uh, why don't we have, why is that we don't have uh, occupants? Why don't we have fatalities? We, 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 we said that our exposure model, and I can verify here, our exposure model has occupants. So why didn't OpenQuake uh, estimate fatalities? Well, the answer, you can find it right here in our input preparation toolkit. And you will see, and you will notice that during the whole workshop, I told you that we have structural fragility models, but we don't have um, a models for occupants, okay? So it means that the fragility, since I only provided OpenQuake with uh, uh, a fragility model for structures, even though I have a column in my exposure model that contains occupants, since I don't have a, a fragility and a consequence model 
for occupants, then I cannot calculate fatalities. So it, it means that I need a consequence model for occupants uh, in order to estimate fatalities, and we do not have them. Okay, so um, that is basically the reason why we do not have fatalities. Uh, but we do have losses, and this is what we're seeing right here. So around 2.6 uh, billion losses, uh, US dollars and billion. Um, let's go, okay, so we already saw the statistics. So we saw damage distributions, we saw the total losses. Let's click on play again. Where I said that I was going to explore for, for uh, different um, types of, of results. We saw the statistics now. Let's see the geographical distribution of the damage and the geographical distribution of the losses, okay? Um, in asset damage distributions, going back to damage, we saw the different bars. We talk about around 30,000 collapses or so. Let's see those collapses in space. Let's see which municipalities are being more affected by the event. So load layer, we're going to click once in load layer. This is going to bring this um, uh, little menu right here, this little window. And in this little window, we can choose for which um, realization, in other words, which GMP. And we are also going to um, um, be able to choose for which building class we want to make a map. So we can, we can make a damage map Alain? for... Uh, uh -huh. Yes, they're asking, can you please go a little bit slower? Like repeat how to uh -huh. upload. Okay, okay, okay. So we saw damage distributions and we saw loss distributions, right? We, to generate the map, we're going back to play, the play icon. Okay, we bring it again. We make sure we click once on the, on the little uh, calculation, on the, on, the, on the row of my calculation, which is this one. Once it's in blue, you will be able to see the results again. And so we're going to see asset damage distributions. We're going back to damage. We want to make a map of them. So you just click on load layer once and you will see this menu, okay? So just to repeat, you go back to the, to the engine, you click on the calculation that we're interested in and in asset damage distributions, you're going to click on load layer, okay? Load layer is going to bring you this little um, menu. So in this menu, we can choose which realization we want to plot. We can also choose which building classes we want to plot. And we're going to choose all. So we want to see damage in all the structures, not for a particular building class. And we can choose um, the damage state, okay? So let's choose for the damage state, let's choose collapse damage state, okay? So realization zero, um, all building classes, and then we're going to plot that collapse. Okay, so in down state, um, please put collapse. And we're ready to plot, but don't click on okay yet. We're going to ask the plugin to aggregate the results by some. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that we saw that there are certain municipalities that only have one point. But the exposure modeler near Medellin put more than one point in the municipality of Medellin since it's the metropolitan area. So many people living there. <laughs> she did this higher discretization of the exposure there. So to see the results aggregated for Medellin, we need to aggregate by municipality. Instead of seeing all the points, we want to see a single result for the municipality. So we're going to choose aggregate by zone. This has to be checked. And in zonal layer, we're going to choose municipalities. And we're going to click on OK. And this is going to bring you the map, OK? So the map is right behind here. I'm just going to, uh, you can just click on, the, on, on, on this window and you will see the map right here, OK? So um, making some space here. Uh, when you load a map, the point results are loaded too. So these are the point results. These damages, realizations, zero, all structural collapses is the point results, okay? Let's unclick it so we can see the map more clear, okay? So you just have to click on checkbox and you will be able to see the maps uh, a little bit more clear. So I will unclick it and then here it is. This is the map. So we have our epicenter right here. This is the uh, San Jeronimo fault. We're having 
an event right here, magnitude seven, and we can see if I display the values right here, I'm going to uh, click on this little left arrow, this left of the layer. You can see basically the number of collapses in different colors that are included or aggregated by municipality. So clearly we can see that this municipality right here has or concentrate most of those 30,000 collapses uh, that we had for the first realization. So 20,000, sorry, I think it was for the first one. So we have, for example, this department is the most affected uh, uh, clearly, but we can see also that there are along the fault we're having departments that are being affected as well. Uh, we can see a lot of damage here as well. If I want to explore particularly how many collapses I have in this one, you can do this. Follow me here. What you have to do is one click, only one click on the layer. It will highlight in blue. And then you're going to do one click in this icon right here. It's um, a small blue bubble with, a, with an eye, with a white eye. You click only once there, and this will allow you to click on any feature of the selected layer. And I'm going to click here in this one. And then I can see the information for that particular municipality. This municipality that I just clicked in is Medellin. We can see that this is Antioquia, this is a direct region. And we can see that 9,000 collapses right here in Medellin. So Medellin is being the most affected uh, because it concentrates most of those collapses, right? So it concentrates them uh, much more. Again, I will just repeat how to highlight or see the, 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 the losses per particular municipality. What you have to do is click once on the layer, make sure that you're clicking only once. Um, and then you click once on this particular tool, identify features is this blue icon right here. You click once and then you will be able to select any of the features of this layer and you will be able to see the losses in each one. Clearly there are some uh, municipalities where there is no collapses and there are some highly affected by the earthquake, okay? Um, because it's interesting to see how um, different will be the damage estimation depending on the GMPs. Let's choose another realization. Let's do the exact same process, but for another realization, okay? So I'm going to click on the play icon. I am going to go to asset distributions again. I'm going to load the layer, okay? So just click once on load layer. And we are going to click instead of realization one, let's take realis eh, realization zero, sorry, let's bring realization one. Okay, so let's bring realization one. We're going to do all building classes and we're going to do again collapse. Okay. This part is again important. Aggregated by zone, and you're going to um, aggregate by municipalities, not by municipalities, structural collapse, because that is this layer. We don't want to aggregate with this layer. We want to aggregate with the one called call L2 municipalities okay so let's check that everything is well done realization one all building classes structural collapses aggregated by municipalities and we're going to click okay and this is going to bring the map for the other realization okay i am going to turn off the points so they are not so uh, they are not confusing us and i am going to see the difference between this map and this map Okay, look at the difference. So there are very different GMPs. You can see that certain, um, one GMP estimates more damage in certain municipalities, the other not so much. So you can see right away that even the choice of the, G the GMP is telling us uh, that there are differences between the municipalities that are being affected. Why? Because we saw that the shape of the ground shaping intensity is different depending on the GMP and the hypocentral distance that I used. So again, what, what we're seeing right now is that we're getting results for each of the GMPs, right? Um, can I generate a map with the average of the three? Yes, you definitely, you certainly can. Uh, um, um, uh, can I see, so here in the IPT, we're seeing it by realization, but you can also see it um, 
um, not using the IPT, but if you're interested, if you want to see a single result or you can do it by your own, you can, because you have all right here in the, you have everything, all the outputs right here. You can see um, you should, and, and I invite you to explore how these outputs look like, how it, each municipality has its damage state or its buildings in different damage states, how each municipality has certain losses. This is something that you can certainly uh, explore by yourself. The IPT um, is a very nice tool. It allows you to do fast calculations, fast visualizations. If you want to do things more advanced, um, you need to explore the outputs of OpenQuick and you need uh, you can come up with your own tool, with your own codes to explore them. Um, before I address some questions, uh, let's do just one last map of losses. Let's see the losses, okay? So I am going to turn off my damage maps, okay? I, I will turn off the damage maps, this one. A second. Let's turn off this damage map and the other one. Uh, everything is turned off except for, uh, sorry, I turned off my municipality. So, no. There you go. Um, Let's do a loss map, okay? Let's, let's economic loss. We saw the damage, okay? Let's see if indeed most of the economic losses are concentrated in Medellin or if the losses display a different geographical distribution. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the play icon again. Okay, and here on the play icon, we're going to go to, instead of asset damage distributions, we're going to click on asset, uh, average asset loss statistics. So we're going to load layer, Okay, and we are going to go, um, we're going to, um, for losses, this is interesting, for losses, um, the, um, the IPT will allow you to plot the mean only, not by realization, but, but the mean, okay? So we're going to plot the mean of the losses for all the building classes, and we're going to aggregate it again. You can see that there are more maps, the more maps I add, the more they appear here. But the one we need to choose is the one that says municipalities, the original one. So you click on that one, and then you click on OK, and this is going to bring the loss map. Again, to, ma to map losses, average asset loss statistics, you click on load layer. You have here the mean, all building classes, and um, we can uh, choose municipalities. And then you click on OK, and that is going to bring you the loss map. So here is the loss map, and you can see that um, there is certainly uh, a high concentration of economic losses in Medellin. We can see, uh, we can see. So we said 2.6 billion dollars of loss. Okay. So how much of those 2.6 billion dollars of loss are in Medellin? 1.6. So basically, Medellin is, is highly affected. Most of the losses um, of those 2.6, 1.6 are in in here in Medellin, the rest is distributed along the rest of the department. So certainly Medellin is losing a lot because not only because of its proximity to the source, but because most of the people, economic assets, productive assets are here. So um, this is why uh, uh, Medellin, and usually when we're estimating risk, we will see that uh, regions with high number of buildings, high number of, of, of exposed structures, tend to come up with very high losses. Uh, even if they are far away from the, from, from the pot, for example, this one, maybe because of its size, the, the, how populated this particular municipality is, even though it's far away from the source, it's still uh, contributing a lot to the losses. It, there's a lot of damage here, there's a lot of losses here. So these are the four types of, of, of loss types that we can explore within the workshop. We saw, um, damage distributions and loss distributions. And we also saw, because we provided OpenQuick with a consequence model, loss, loss statistics and uh, loss maps, okay? So that's it. That's it for, for today's uh, workshop. I hope um, 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 you really, uh, my recommendation is explore more. Try to check what happens. Uh, does the damage for the EDIS realization look the same? Um, what are those other outputs? What are those, these other outputs? For example, what are the realizations? And here you can load the table and see the realizations. You can even load the ground motion fields and see if they are similar to the ones we did last time or not, and why. You should explore all of this. Yeah, um, it's something that is nice to do uh, on your own time. Um, and, and certainly it's something that is worth doing. 
also that I, I invite you highly, I recommend you highly to explore these ones and to explore the ones that are come from, because um, this is the raw data. Uh, the, the, the QGIS plugin is just looking into this and giving you the information. But it will be nice to, for you to see the format of these files and see how you can manipulate it, how you can identify which asset is the, is the one with the highest loss, which asset, which municipality is the one with the, with the highest damage. We saw it here graphically, right? But you could also identify that in those, uh, in those uh, uh, files. And you can do that with any tools you want. You can even use Excel to do all, all these things. 